Brooks of Islam. Umar Brooks embraced Islam a few years ago and is an active da'i, caller to Islam in the UK. He is also a member of the Society of, of Converts to Islam. He has been responsible for the famous rallies which are held in London at Trafalgar Square, where the public and the general masses are invited to come and witness the superiority of Islam and embrace Islam publicly. With that, I invite Brother Omar Brooks. Identity for the Muslim community in the UK and quite honestly it's a quite relevant topic for all of us. I believe the community in the UK is relatively new. In fact the Muslims came here in large numbers in the 60s and 70s. And that first initial wave of the community was economical migrants to get money, to get a better life, and hopefully to go back home in the future. But what's happened is what's here in front of us, the first generation of the Muslim community. Even myself, my parents came here in the 60s, and I'm the first generation of my family born in the UK. And with that first generation, we faced many problems. Schooling, halal meat, masjids, and many of the day-to-day -day issues facing all the Muslims. And that initial wave of the community, they got married, they had children, they went to school. And with the educational system here, we found the first causes of conflict and worry for the parents and the Muslim elders here. The lack of identity, the loss of our identity, the loss of our belief. And you can see what's been a result of that. The British government has for the last 20, 30 plus years been working hard to integrate the Muslim community. And integration, for your information, it means to adopt the ideas, the thoughts, the feelings, the aqidah of the society you're living in. And what do you give in return? Samosas, halal meat, bakalawa, gulab jamun, and I love gulab jamun as well, especially the coconut one. So integration means adopting from their belief, adopting their way of life, adopting their systems. And Allah said in the Quran, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِي مِلَّتَهُمْ Said the Jews and the Christians, they will never be pleased with you until you follow their millah. And in fact, you can see that every day in the papers and every day in the government statements. It's only when the Muslim community are fully integrated, meaning give up their belief, give up their tawheed, and fully submerge into the society and adopt the way in life of the society, then they'll be pleased with you. So integration was the main drive of the British government. In the schools, universities, in the media, through the 80s, through the 90s, and then subhanAllah, we came to 9-11. And 9-11 was a turning point for the Muslims in the UK, as it was for the Muslims around the world. And Allah said, وَإِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا جَعَنَّا آلِيَهَا سَافِلَهَا or سَافِلَهَا so Allah said, when our commands come, we make the highest mountains, the highest peaks, come to the ground, to the lowest levels. And the two towers were destroyed. And the community here faced a vital junction and a vital point in our history in the UK. Where do our allegiances lie? What is our identity? Are we British Muslims? Are we Muslims living in the UK? Do we have allegiance to the queen and country? Is my allegiance to the Muslims in Afghanistan and to now Iraq and to Palestine and around the world? The question of allegiance, the question of where does my belief lies? Or is my belief something restricted to the masjid or restricted to halal meat or restricted to janazah or restricted to nikah and the other sha'ar al deen? The question of identity as poses its head. And how are we going to answer this? What is the role of the Muslims? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said to the Malaika, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Allah said to the Malaika, I've made insan, us, 
in the Ard as Khalifa. The Ard is the place of taklif, is the place of responsibility, is the place of your wajibat, of your mandubat, the place of the commands to do and not to do, the Ard. And the Ard is not restricted to the Middle East, neither restricted to Pakistan, or to Somalia, or Afghanistan, or anywhere. He said, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. So the place of taklif is the ard. Meaning, the sharia, the rules we need to abide by, they are never restricted by any geographical boundaries. First point to understand. Number one, the sharia is for the whole dunya. Wherever I am. And in fact, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam hadith, he said, ittaqillah haythu ma kunta. He said, fear Allah wherever you are, regardless of your geographical boundary or location. Fear Allah wherever you are. Ittaqillah wa taqwa ibn Abbas al taqwa the hadith of the name of Muhammad he said, al taqwa ha huna, it's in the hearts, it's in the actions, it's in the sayings, it's in the emotions, it's in the feelings. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, la yu'minu ahadukum, none of you is a believer, at the hawa'ahu, you know his hawa, his desires. Is even his desires must be fully in accordance with the Sharia, wherever he is. So I live in the UK, and I have three options. Number one is to integrate. What is integration? Integration is a lack or a loss of my belief, a loss of my Sharia, a loss of my identity. And where is the example of integration in the UK? It is found in those organizations established by the British government, and I must name some for a few. MCB, Muslim Council of Britain. When the war started in Afghanistan, and they sent the British forces to bomb Muslims in Afghanistan, to destroy houses, to destroy property, to murder, they said there are troops, they said there are boys. And in fact, Tony Blair sent many Muslims to go and fight against the Muslims in Afghanistan. Integration. And the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, he said, لا يحل دم امرئ المسلم He said, not allowed the blood of a Muslim إلا بإحدى ثلاث Except in one of three circumstances. الثيب الزاني The one who is a fornicator, adulterer. والنفس بالنفس The one who kills someone, life for life. والتارك لدينه مفارك للجماعة And the one who leaves the community divides from the Muslims, the one who goes to the other side, who joins the non-Muslims and fights against the believers, he is an apostate. He's a murtad. La karama lahu. La izza lahu. There's no dignity, no honor for him. And you've heard the fatwa inside Pakistan, they said those soldiers who fight and kill the Muslims on the border where it's in Northwest Frontier Province with the American forces, they said it's haram to pray janazah for them. I mean no janaz on the kafir. And they said, go and fight in Afghanistan. And many did. It's the prime example of integration. And the integration has been pushed in the community because there's a lack of serious understanding in the belief of the Muslims. Subhanallah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Beautiful statements. Shake the mountains. Shake the trees. Shake all of creation. Allah said in the ayah that we... أردنا الأمانة. He said we gave, we offered the amana للسماوات والأرض والجبال. He said we offered the amana of the Sharia of the Deen of لا إله إلا الله to who? To the samawat, to the heavens, والأرض and to the the lands, والجبال and to the mountains. And they refused. فأبينا أن يحملها. They said we cannot carry it. We can't manage this message. It's too heavy. وَشْفَقْنَا مِنْهَا They couldn't manage the message. But, insan, he said, I can manage it. So the message of the Sharia is so heavy to carry. That's why we're going to be tested. And indeed, Allah said about this Qur'an, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشَّةِ اللَّهِ said, if we send this Jibal, or excuse me, this Qur'an on the mountains, be destroyed. Because the weight of the message. Anybody know the weight of La ilaha illallah? The value of the Sharia, the value of the Quran, if it can destroy the mountains, if the heavens and the earth, they couldn't carry it. 
we have it so lightly in our hands. Because the understanding of the Qur'an and the understanding of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah wasallam, becomes so weak in the minds of the Muslims. The Iman, At-Tawheed, Ifrad Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala bil ibadah to worship Allah exclusively. Pillar of the deen. Allah said the one who does any sin, Allah could forgive him. But the mushrik, for him is the dozak and the naar. And one element of Tawheed, this worshiping Allah alone, is called Tawheed wala'i wal bara. Tawheed have wala, alliance and allegiance to the Muslims, regardless of their nationality, of their geographical location, or the passport they hold. Allegiance to Allah, to the Nabi Muhammad wasallam, to the Muslim community around the world, regardless wherever you are. The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he said, Al-Muslimoon ummatun wahida min dooni nas. He said, Ardahum wahida, wa hardahum wahida. He said, the Muslim ummah, one unique ummah, min the wala, this tawheed, manifests itself in the ikhuwa, the brotherhood of the believers. Allegiance to one another, to help one another, to ally to one another, to support one another, and to be far, and the bara'a, to keep distance from the mushrikeen and the shirk. What is my identity? Am I a British Muslim? A British Muslim is the one, his allegiance is to the Queen. His allegiance is to a red book, the passport. His allegiance is to the JSA and the income support. No brothers, that's not the Muslim. The Muslim, his allegiance is to Allah, to the Nabi and to the Muslims. So the attack for the community has been on the first front of integration. And there have been many in the community formulated groups to go around calling for this integration into the police force. And when they join the police force, let's not be fooled. It's not about a good salary. They want to recruit Urdu speakers, Punjabi speakers, Arabic speakers, Somali speakers. MI5 for example, they advertise in Muslim news, looking for Arabic speakers, Punjabi speakers, Mirpuri accents. You know why? Do you believe the Russians and the KGB speak Punjabi? Huh? You believe so? No, 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 they don't. You believe the Cubans and the Chinese, they speak or they come from Mirapur? No, they don't. I may be not so good on you know, geography, but they don't. I mean, they're recruiting from the Muslim community to spy on the Muslim community. And that was in a, a, a so-called Muslim paper, Muslim news. The police force. Secondly, when Tony Blair came into the elections, when he was initially elected, it was called the year of the Muslim vote. And in that year, Tony Blair and his cronies, they went around to most of the major mosques in the major cities, if you can remember that far back. They visited East London Mosque in London. They visited Central Mosque in Regent's Park. And I'm saying inside the mosque, him and his wife, to get the Muslim community to vote. Integration. And voting, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters, is nothing more than an element of shirk. Because the parliament, it is the temple where the, par the parliamentarians, the MPs, they go to legislate law. And legislation is the haqq of Allah. That's why to study Tawheed and to study Iman and to study the Sharia will protect you. Protect you from the fusuk, protect you from the haram, and even more importantly, protect you from the shirk. Because the one who never studied Tawheed and he never studied shirk, he could believe he's a Muslim and he could become a mushrik by his actions. So they came inside the elections. So one, to join them in their police forces and in the army. Obviously, as you know, many Muslims went to fight in Afghanistan from the British forces and from the American forces. I remember there was a warship. It was called, I forget the name, but on this warship, it was outside on the um, Persian Ocean on its way towards Afghanistan. And they were showing on CNN they were praying inside the warship, American battleship. And there was an Imam, and the Imam, he was on there, and he was given the full khutbah. And he said, this is an American Jihad. <coughs> an American Jihad. And obviously, Amir al-Mu'mineen must be George Bush. <laughs> he must be Mawlana, Sheikh al-Islam, George Bush. And the same for Tony Blair, because they are experts on Islam. They know what's halal, they know what's haram. Integration. And they went and they fought and they bombed and they killed, but not Muslims. 
integration on the police force, on the military, in the army, and on the highest echelons of powers, the MPs. That uh, electoral year of the Muslim vote was the year when we had the first Muslim MP, Mohammed Sarwa, in Glasgow. And then we had Baranis Uddin. Then we had Lord Wahid Ali and Lord Nazir Ahmed. All of them part and parcel of the British system. You may say to yourself, brothers, it's in our interest. We need to get money for schools, maybe some grants for a centre. We can help the community in the UK. Do not be fooled, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters. In fact, it was the same ideas and principles and thoughts that led some Muslims to assist with the occupation of India under the British Raj. For your information, when the British came to India under Clive, they called him Clive of India, he was part of the East Indian Company. They came to India with 5,000 troops. 5,000. That's nothing. The stadium behind me holds maybe 30,000. 5,000 troops came to India. And in the first major battle, it's called the battle at the Bay of Bengal, obviously. And the Emir was Emir Shamsuddin. May Allah, you know, bless him. And on this battle, Clive with his 5,000 troops, he fought against the Muslims. And because of one Khain, one traitor who betrayed the Muslims, the whole area was lost. Like Afghanistan. They could never come to Afghanistan without the assistance of Musharraf. They could never come to Iraq without the assistance of those leaders around them, like Fahd of Saudi Arabia, or Bashar of Syria. Only with the assistance of the surrounding regimes could they come to Iraq. The same in the time of Clive, when they came to fight against the Muslims, Amir Shamsuddin, by the traitor of the head of the army of the Muslims in that area, they took Bengal. And obviously, a hundred years later, from 5,000 troops, they said the British army in India numbered quarter of a million. 250,000. Now that's a lot. That's bigger than the stadium several times over. And the point I'm making were, those 255 or 250,000 troops, they were from the natives. They were from the Muslims, from the Hindus, and from the Sikhs. The British government have a policy where they utilize the community to do their dirty work. That's why they want you to spy on the community. They want you to inform to the police. They want you to lose your identity. They want you to become a British Muslim. I mean the one who doesn't believe in la ilaha illallah. Unless he's talking about samosas, or gulab jamun, or bakura. Because I like bakura as well. So I'm going to mention bakura. So you can see the issue of integration, it is an issue with belief. Allah said they would never be pleased with us until we become kaf. The second option for the Muslims in the UK in regards to our identity is to isolate ourselves. We can become isolationists. We can come out of society and have our own small areas like the, the Jews do inside London. They have some areas predominantly after the Jewish community. And they don't interact, the Orthodox Jews, with the society around them. And the reason that's the case because they have nothing to offer. They believe they are the saved people, Sha'b al-Muhtar, the chosen people, and everyone else is to the hellfire. But that's not the case for the Muslim community. Indeed, the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he ordered us to give da'wah. بَلِّقُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً A da'wah ila Allah is a wajib on every Muslim. فَرْدُعَيْنِ To give da'wah. You need to call to Islam. Call to the belief of la ilaha ila Allah. Call to the system, the sharia. Part and parcel of your own individual responsibility. Like your salat is your fault. I can't pray for you. And don't believe no Mawlana pray for you either. Even if you pay him money, and even if you give him gulab jamun, he still can't pray for you. You need to pray for yourself. Because it's your own individualistic obligation. What about da'wah? Fardu'ayn on every Muslim. So there's no opportunity, no excuse to come out of society and isolate yourself. Not only that, maybe you call to Islam. But what about the munkarat in society? Those muharramat, those sin, those evil things which Allah said they're evil. What is the responsibility in regards to those? The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith Bukhari. He said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, The hadith is so famous, so many times been heard, you must hear it. He said, whoever see munkar, shahid al munkar, mean he witnessed the evil. What is the evil? Whatever Allah forbid. Homosexuality, not only is it legal in the UK, you become married to a man. No longer Adam and Eve, become Adam and Steve. <laughs> They're married in America. 
Two men have been married. Two women have been married. And believe you me, it's going to come to the UK. Because the UK is the tail of the dog. If America does yes, America, the UK does yes. They always follow the states. So it'll come a time when you will go to register your marriage, or you become married, excuse me, and you will see two men be married inside the UK. What is our responsibility in regards to this? The Munkar is not just for the Muslims. The Hadith said, if you see Muslim do so and so speak out, said, whoever see Munkar, any Munkar, excuse me, any Munkar, any evil, he must forbid it with his hand if he has the capability. He must speak out. He must command good and forbid evil. You know what that means? I was speaking to some brothers that come from Switzerland. Subhanallah. They came to a da'wah stall inside London and they said it's so different in comparison to Sweden. The Muslims here are speaking out. The Muslims are forbidding the evil. I saw another da'wah stall on Oxford Street yesterday. Oxford Street, as you should know, is the main shopping street in the UK. There's no place like Oxford Street. And the da'wah they lost yesterday, mashallah, it was fantastic, honestly, Allah Akbar. People interacting, microphones, Islam is the solution. There was one brother, he said a, fin a very nice quote. He said, the future is bright, but it's not orange. The future is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And I thought to myself, I agree brother. The future is la ilaha illallah. For all people, of all colors, of all races, over their noses, la ilaha illallah is going to come to them. Over their noses. But the obligation on all of us to call for la ilaha illallah. If you love Allah, follow the Nabi. And he ordered us to call for the Sharia. So, a da'wah illallah, to call to la ilaha illallah. And then also, ta'maruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna alil munkar. Come on, good. Al ma'aruf, so general, means all the ma'aruf of the Sharia. For your information, there's nothing in Islam called negative. At all. Don't have this weak mentality, Islam has negative side and positive sides. I.e. cutting the hand of the thief is negative. And have wudu five times a day, it is positive. Because it's cleansiness. No brothers, cutting the hand of the thief is positive. It's the solution for crime. The forbidden of alcohol and all intoxicants is positive. It's the solution for the corruption in the UK society. There was a report done by the police office. They said the cause or the major cause, or the prime cause of violent crime related to drugs in the UK is not because of cocaine and heroin, it's because of alcohol abuse. Islam roots out the problem from the basis. Provide to the Western society the solution. No isolation. Isolation is provide no solution. The da'wah will help to formulate your identity. Will help to tell who you are. The da'i. The one calling for la ilaha illallah. The da'i, the one defending the haqq of the Muslims. The da'i, the one supporting the Muslims around the world. The da'i, the one so proud said, I'm a Muslim. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنْ قَوْلًا مِمَّا دَعِي اللَّهُ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Who is better than the one who calls the Allah to the Nabi, to the Deen, and the good deeds? And said, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. And I'm so proud to Alhamdulillah, these are my brothers. And I don't even know them. That's Islam. That's identity of somebody. He has an ummah 1.5 billion. Not 2 million here, 6 million there. Or 30,000 in Derby. He's part of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That's his identity. Identity something to be proud of. Identity relates to my belief directly. Identity is not because of passports. And not because of document. It's to do with belief. So number one, he can isolate himself. Completely out of the question. Number two, he can be an integrationist. Take their belief, adopt from them, and you can see what's happened to those who become MPs, or those who are going to fight Muslims in Afghanistan. And the last one, it is the only option, is to interact. Is to work in this society to change the society. I know that sounds strange to many of you, because like I said before, the initial wave of the community was for economical reasons. And if I come here to make money, I'm not busy in da'wah. If I'm coming to make money, I'm not busy in forbidding the evil of society. I've come here to make money. But we're here now. The community has deep roots, has a masajid, has shops, has business, has community, has schools. But need now to change the society. Need now to show who we are as Muslims in the UK. Muslims in the UK. Because I live in the UK, but I'm not a British Muslim. 
and there is a finite difference. The difference is my allegiance is to Allah. My allegiance is to the Muslims. You know there's been a new law introduced by the government in regards to the oath of allegiance. Before when someone comes to the UK, he applies for citizenship, he just signs a piece of paper. He gets a passport, he can travel as he likes as a British citizen. But no longer. After 9-11 and the events in Afghanistan and Iraq and the call from many Muslims here for us to support Muslims abroad as our brothers. And the whole issue of treason, the treason law and his allegiance to the Queen, British Muslims in Cuba, Afghanistan and so forth. They've come up with the idea called the Oath of Allegiance. No longer can someone sign a piece of paper. When he wants to become a British citizen, he must first learn about British society and British culture. He must make oath, awesome, to obey the Queen and respect the law. You can see these are directly targeted the Muslim community. Because as you well know, the Hindus, he doesn't have a system of life. He has no Sharia. The cow does not give any Sharia. And he doesn't claim so either. It's not a put down. The Hindu doesn't claim to have a system of life. He claims to have a spiritual belief. And same for the Sikh. And even for the Jew. And for the Christian. He said about ten commandments, but in outside sphere of life, his religion has no impact whatsoever. But for the Muslim it's completely different. Allah said this Quran, وَنَزَلْنَا Allah said we send this Quran, kitaban or tibyan and likulli shaykh. Allah said we send this kitab, tibyan and likulli shaykh. We send this book as a clarification for every matter. Every matter. I mean as a Muslim must disbelieve, I must believe, Islam has the solution. If I don't know, I need to seek knowledge. If I don't know, I need to study. But I must carry the deen of Islam. No longer can the community be here just passing time. Because as I said before, we're facing a critical junction in our time in the UK. You saw what happened in Madrid. Did you hear the response of the Spanish to the Muslim community there? What about the UK? What's going to be the response if anything happens in the UK? How are we going to be treated? Do you know the Muslim community in the UK, not only do we suffer injustice at the hands of the government abroad, but in the UK, there are laws such as the anti-law or the new law of terrorism, which target directly the Muslim community. These laws, they enable the police forces to arrest you, me, any of us, without any evidence. Because a Muslim, he is guilty until he can prove his innocence. The Muslims in Cuba, kidnapped inside Afghanistan, taken to Cuba, held for two years. Initially when they were taken to Cuba, George Bush, he said these are the most evil terrorists in the world. Meaning, they're already guilty. Before trial, before evidence, they're guilty. They're the most evil terrorists in the world. Two years later, you're free to go. And when they came to the UK, they were arrested again. SubhanAllah. Two years in captivity, you come home thinking, you know, that gulab jamun, I'm going to go get my gulab jamun at last, you know, and my pakora, and I'm going to see my family. And as you come off the plane, you've been arrested again. And after they've been arrested, being questioned by the British forces, you see, when it comes to the hard time, you're not British Muslim, you're a Muslim. Even they understand on the hard moments, the crisis time, you're not a British Muslim. Whether you like it or not, you're a Muslim. They arrested them also, and the police questioned them. They released them, and they said there's no charge, no evidence. Remember, it's supposedly innocent until proven guilty. The next day in the Sun paper, the Sun is the biggest selling gutter press in the UK. They said these are the enemies within, they are guilty. So even if you prove your innocence in the courts, or at the hands of those oppressors, the Americans and the British forces, is still guilty in the eyes of the public. That's why the community here must speak out. Shame on those who see Muslims being arrested. I remember this brother inside Derby. He was, his wife was arrested. But Omar, his wife was arrested. There was no demonstration. There was no march in the community. And she's a sister. Been taken by the police. We should march for anybody, but even more for the woman. Nobody said a word. The community was silent. Because the identity, the understanding of the responsibility to call for the deen, to forbid the evil, to support the Muslims, allegiance to Allah, wala to the Muslims, bara from the kafirs, 
When Muslims be arrested, the community should be boiling. But as you know, when Muslims be arrested, there's nothing boiling. The community are not moving. And every one of us are responsible for that. Don't be fools. Don't be thinking it's just the Mawlana or the Alim or just some group need to walk. You are responsible. You have on your neck the zimma of the Muslims. You have on your neck the hadith said Al-Muslim Akhul Muslim. The Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. He always supports him. He never lets him down. Was you there for her, that sister? Or for the 600 being arrested since 9-11 in the UK? No. We wasn't. Not just you. We were not there. So it's time to make a stance and to change the direction we're heading in. So they came back, held for two years. They interviewed one of these Muslims from South London. I think his name was Jamal al And when they arrested him, they said to him, Trevor McDonald. And Trevor McDonald was interviewing this guy on a Tonight program. I think it's ITM News Tonight. And the brother said, when we was inside the prisons, we was tortured. And that's not surprising. Because if they come to kill Muslims in Afghanistan, if I come to kill you, I will torture you, that's less. So he said we were tortured. We were injected with chemicals. We were humiliated because they understand it's Islam and Muslims they're fighting against. So they tried to humiliate them. And he said one very interesting point. He said, and for those brothers, people of Taqwa, people of you know Dari, Namazi, people of the Quran, he said, for those brothers, the Taqi, Muttaqi, they used to bring to them naked women. Naked women. Trevor McDonald said, are you trying to tell me? Because you can imagine now, as a gaffer, he goes, are you trying to tell me that they tortured them with naked women? Because for the non-Muslim, he can't understand that. If he told him, okay, there's a prison where there are naked women torturing you, he goes, how do I sign my name? And do I need a passport? I'm a British Muslim. I'll come with you. So he would volunteer himself. Trevor McDonald said, are you trying to tell us, the British public, that they tortured them with naked women? And the brother said, yes. You know why? Because they know it's deen, it's belief, it's taqwa, it's iman, it's tawheed. They fight against Islam and Muslims. War on terror is war on Islam. And if the community don't realize that in the UK, then we really have become British Muslims. We really have become part of the war against our brothers. Because that war is against us. And it's not the first time they offered women as a temptation to weaken the Iman of the believers. Because remember, Iman is Yidwayanqus. Iman goes up and down. The ayah said, when you say to them, the people have gathered together against you, what happens? Their Iman goes up. The Muslims become stronger in their Iman. So they understand the issue of belief. And the proof is, in the time of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, after his da'wah, because remember, he was our example. And in Mecca, he never stayed silent. As a minority, he never stayed silent. In fact, he came out, excuse me, he came out into society, calling for la ilaha illallah, forbidding the munkarat, and the sharia wasn't even revealed yet. Allahu Akbar. He never even had the sharia that said, for the adulterer should be stoned. For the thief, he should be handcuffed. He never had sharia fully. He just had la ilaha illallah, tawheed. And he still forbid the munkarat of his society. Subhanallah. And they came to him with his uncle, as we do to many Islamists. They come with someone from the community, PC Habib, PC Aziz, PC Naziz, and all the names you can think of. He said, yeah, I'm a British Muslim. Uh, there's one association called the British Muslim Association. Very big daddy the man has, mashallah. I remember in Spark Mosque, we met him. They had a store in the masjid, Central Mosque. His beard, mashallah, was what I dream about, to have beard like this. And he was saying, we the British Muslims and we need to recruit Muslims. Recruit Muslims to spy on Muslims and to arrest us and to give us to the kuffar. We kicked him out of the mosque. Walhamdulillah. And that's the responsibility of all of you. Never go to masjid, sit down. And they said, today brothers, before the khutbah, we have the local MP to address you how to vote for him. A'udhu billah. Let him have our shoes. And especially the smelly shoes. The one you always find in the corner. You know the one I'm talking about. So they came to the Nabi Muhammad and they offered him doctors. If you're sick, we give you doctor. If you want money, some pesa, just to stop this message, we give you money. 
if you want a woman, remember what the man obey? They said, if you want a woman, we'll give you the best woman of the Arabs. The best. Khubsurat, yeah? My Urdu is not that good, but I know those words. The best woman of the Arabs, if you just stop your message. Like they came to the brothers in Cuba, exactly the same. But the kafir are the enemy of the Muslims. Doesn't mean we treat them unjustly, but that's the reality. Allah obliged us to treat them fairly by the Sharia. Court Islam, command good, forbid evil. Your identity is so clear. I'm a Muslim, I believe in Allah. Wa kulihu bihada wa rastafurullah. Jazakallah khair Umar Brooks. of Islam. Umar Brooks embraced Islam a few years ago and is an active da'i, caller to Islam in the UK. He is also a member of the Society of, of Converts to Islam. He has been responsible for the famous rallies which are held in London at Trafalgar Square, where the public and the general masses are invited to come and witness the superiority of Islam and embrace Islam publicly. With that, I invite Brother Omar Brooks. Identity for the Muslim community in the UK and quite honestly it's a quite relevant topic for all of us. I believe the community in the UK is relatively new. In fact, the Muslims came here in large numbers in the 60s and 70s. And that first initial wave of the community was economical migrants to get money, to get a better life, and hopefully to go back home in the future. But what's happened is what's here in front of us, the first generation of the Muslim community. Even myself, my parents came here in the 60s, and I'm the first generation of my family born in the UK. And with that first generation, we faced many problems, schooling, Halal meat, masjids, and many of the day-to-day -day issues facing all the Muslims. Ja'anna aliyaha safida, or safida. So Allah said, when our commands come, we make the highest mountains, the highest peaks, come to the ground, to the lowest levels, and the two towers were destroyed. And the community here faced a vital junction and a vital point in our history in the UK. Where do our allegiances lie? What is our identity? Are we British Muslims? Are we Muslims living in the UK? Do we have allegiance to the Queen and country? Is my allegiance to the Muslims in Afghanistan and to now Iraq and to Palestine and around the world? The question of allegiance, the question of where does my belief lies? Or is my belief something restricted to the masjid or restricted to halal meat or restricted to adopting their systems? And Allah said in the Quran, النصارى, said the Jews and the Christians, they will never be pleased with you until you follow their millah. And in fact, you can see that every day in the papers and every day in the government statements. It's only when the Muslim community are fully integrated, mean give up their belief, give up their tawheed, and fully submerge into the society and adopt the way in life of the society, then they'll be pleased with you. So integration was the main drive of the British government. In the schools, universities, in the media, through the 80s, through the 90s, and then subhanAllah, we came to 9-11. And 9-11 was a turning point for the Muslims in the UK as it was for the Muslims around the world. And Allah said, وَإِذَا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا And that initial wave of the community, they got married. They had children. They went to school. And with the educational system here, we found the first causes of conflict and worry for the parents and the Muslim elders here. The lack of identity. The loss of our identity. The loss of our belief. And you can see what's been a result of that. The British government has for the last 20, 30 plus years been working hard to integrate the Muslim community. And integration, for your information, 
It means to adopt the ideas, the thoughts, the feelings, the aqidah of the society you're living in. And what do you give in return? Samosas, halal meat, baklava, gulab jamun, and I love gulab jamun as well, especially the coconut one. So, integration means adopting from their belief, adopting their way of life.